When you visit websites secured by HTTPS, you may see that green sign, which means that your browser not only has a secure connection with the website, but also it verifies that provided certificate is valid, so you can ensure that there is no man in the middle attack on your connection. Typical flow of configuring secure connection looks like this. You first ask if server supports secure connections, next you receive his certificate, validate it on client side. After if everything is ok, you send session key which will be used to encrypt your connection and you establish secure seal session. But actually it's possible to add one more step and for the server to request client certificate. In this step, server can reject or approve client based on his certificate. And that's what we call mutual TLS, when both client and server check certificates. In the next few minutes I'm going to show you how you can use Nginx to secure your API with mutual TLS. I have a standard Nginx configuration on my machine and first thing we're going to add is secure support, so basically standard HTTPS setup. We need to specify certificate and key and let's first generate them using the following command. Uh, it will ask you for a few fields and the most uh, important one is a common name, which specify domain of our server. And for ML can be anything at this moment. Now let's check how that looks. Uh, this certificates uh, are generated in PAM format by default, which is basically base64 encoded certificates. It's commonly used in all server software. Now let's try to verify that everything works as expected. Oops, we missed the HTTPS port. And now we see browser warning. It happens because our certificate is self-signed and unknown by the browser. So let's add exception to the browser and tell that we are safe to use this certificate. Now everything seems to be working and our connection is secure. Now we need to generate client certificate and only allow connections from this certificate. To do this we run exactly the same command just for this different path to the certificate and key and in this case in common name field we just put username. It will not be actually used anywhere, only when you look at the certificate details uh, and we actually need only certificate hash, but this is about this later. Next, you can see that we need to enable SL client certification using SL verify client on and specify pass to client certificate. And now let's check how it works. To do this I am using curl in fact, you can configure custom certificates, client certificates in browser as well, but it differs from platform to platform, so it will be your home task. As you can see, Curl also needs some special flag to accept self-signed certificates. Okay, now we have an error, so we can't access this endpoint until we specify certificate. And let's do this using third and key attributes of the Curl command. So let's put the right pass and copy the same to the key, just called key. Okay, and looks like we passed. So it's working. Now let's try to make it more complex. I generated the second certificate just to ensure that it will not work because it's not whitelisted in the engine configuration. Now let's try a bit more complex configuration when multiple client certificates allow to access the server, but only few of them can access some specific paths. We can do this by whitelisting certificate fingerprint. In order to allow multiple client certificates, just concatenate them using cut command or similar into one single file and just provide this path to the Nginx. First let's try to verify our setup. So let's try to access with allow certificate and seems to be working. Now let's try to change it to the client2 and you see that it's forbidden. And fingerprint which you saw can be generated by OpenSSL command looking like this. You specify certificate pass and fingerprint command, line, command option and you see this one certificate, uh, fingerprint. 
just remove columns and make it lowercase to make it work with Nginx. And that's all. Thank <music> you.